Welcome to NYNJPA Weather, your severe weather source for the Northern Mid Atlantic. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. Good morning. Welcome to August 1st. I can't believe it's already August. This month went really fast. Well, let's see. We have another threat for severe thunderstorms once again. So the month may have changed, but apparently the pattern has not. So what can we expect going forward for today? Well, for the most part, first of all, we are dealing with a rather warm and humid air mass once again. Temperatures are rising through the lower to mid 80s over much of the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area. A few 70s are showing up in northeastern Pennsylvania and the Hudson River Valley because of a weak disturbance that is that produced a few showers and it's quickly collapsing. Now what's interesting is when we look at the dew points here, they're already in the mid 60s to lower 70s. So clearly we are dealing with a hot and humid air mass that is already becoming rapidly unstable. So what does that mean for this afternoon? Well, let's take a look at the water vapor satellite picture and you could see we have a very impressive disturbance setting up over southeastern Canada that's diving towards New England. Now we're going to be on the southern edge of this upper level disturbance. So I think the worst of the thunderstorms, the strongest thunderstorms, will be over Connecticut, the southern Hudson River Valley, and northeastern Pennsylvania. But parts of the Philadelphia metropolitan area are still going to be a threat for severe weather. And when we zoom in, I want to show you the upper level winds. And you can see they're all from the northwest. Well, the mid-level winds are also from the northwest. And the low-level winds as well. So what this basically means is that we're dealing with a unidirectional wind component. Which basically means that unlike the last severe event where we had a lot of shear and some tornadoes developed, this time the shear is very weak and the biggest threat with these thunderstorms will be strong wind gusts from downdraft wind gusts uh, ranging anywhere from 50 to as high as 70 miles per hour. Large hail also is going to be a threat, heavy downpours and frequent lightning. But again, I think because the majority of the lifting is focused in parts of the northern Hudson River Valley and New England, I think that the New York City and Philadelphia metropolitan area will not see the worst of this severe weather. In fact, I would not be surprised if parts of southern New Jersey completely misses out on this threat. Looking at the surface map from the SPC, loading right here, and you can see what I mean when I say that the shear is pretty weak. There really isn't much in the way of shear, but when we look at the dynamics as far as the potential for lifting, you can see that the lower level of the atmosphere is already showing an impressive lapse rate over 7 degrees Celsius up to 7.5 degrees Celsius in the Philadelphia metropolitan area so we're clearly dealing with an unstable atmosphere so there won't be any, any limiting factors as far as thunderstorm development the question is how strong will they get and how strong the lifting will get also notice that the mid-levels this time are rather unstable over 6 degrees Celsius already and I expect that to strengthen as we move on through the afternoon hours. So again, we're dealing with an unstable air mass. There's going to be plenty of thunderstorms around. The question is whether they'll all be severe. Going into the Atlantic, I just want to point out we have a rather impressive disturbance here that we've been watching the past few days. And they're currently are sending in an Air Force reconnaissance airplane to check out this disturbance completely. Some reports basically suggest there's a elongated low pressure system in this disturbance. And when we zoom in, you can see that there is a hint of a circulation developing. But really, right now, we're still waiting to see whether this will be named a tropical depression. Now, there are several models that suggest that this disturbance will eventually become a rather dangerous hurricane and could approach the East Coast. We have to wait to see that how this disturbance develops, where exactly it's going to move, because the model guys all agrees that the disturbance, whether it's a tropical depression, a storm, or still a disturbance, will be in this area to the southeast of Puerto Rico in the next 48 hours. And then somewhere around the Bahamas by the end of this week. And then from there, it could curve up the east coast, or it could move into the Gulf of Mexico. We're not really sure right now. A lot of this depends on the exact position, strength, and orientation, or well, position and orientation, the same thing, of an upper level trough 
over the east coast. There's a chance that that trough could pick up this disturbance and send it out into the Atlantic, or the disturbance there's, it just misses the tropical disturbance. The trough just misses the tropical disturbance and allows the tropical disturbance to move up the east coast either as a tropical storm or a hurricane. But there is a lot to keep an eye on with this disturbance and there's plenty to uh, work out. But for right now, just keep an eye on it and know that it's out there. Also, I'm keeping an eye on this disturbance out here. It has a very weak mid-level circulation and also it's producing plenty of thunderstorms. This is the intertropical convergence zone. And as you can see, it's very active. And when this is active, the potential for hurricanes and tropical storms to develop increases exponentially. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this area heading into the rest of August and into September. So let's take a look at the forecast. And as you can see, for today, we have that cold front moving through and chance for showers and thunderstorms. Tomorrow, that cold front is gone, and we're on the northwest per portion of this upper level ridge. And here's another disturbance that's going to make a, a run towards the northern mid Atlantic. But again, this time it's going to occur on Wednesday morning. So we're going to be looking at a weakening thunderstorm complex moving through on Wednesday morning into early Wednesday afternoon with showers and thunderstorms. And this time it looks like it's going to target the Philadelphia metropolitan area. But again, we got to see exactly just how strong this upper level disturbance is. As it's going to be on the base of the upper level trough swinging through, so there could be a chance that it weakens exponentially as it's moving east, and thus is not as impressive as what we're seeing on the model guidance. Thereafter, high pressure is in control all the way through into Friday, and then we head into Saturday. Another disturbance will approach with showers and thunderstorms in the morning, those clear out, and then, like I said, I have to keep an eye on our friend here, our tropical storm or hurricane, and see exactly how it develops and where it's going to move through. Again, this trough right here, there's these disturbances, will are supposed to pick up this tropical system and force it out into the Atlantic, but this disturbance is a huge wild card as far as how strong it gets and how much influence it has on this upper level pattern and whether it could just pretty much reflect these very weak troughs moving through the region. So we're clearly dealing with a very active weather pattern setting up. Of course with severe weather on the way you could trust an NYNJPA weather to provide the latest details through Twitter, Facebook, and of course at NYNJPAweather.com. Thank you for trusting in NYNJPA weather as your severe weather source for the northern mid-Atlantic. To find the latest weather information and severe weather coverage, always trust in NYNJPAweather.com or find NYNJPA weather on Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. Have an excellent day.